Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today is Wednesday and that means it is time for a Top 5 Wednesday. I don't do these every week, but this week's topic is books that I did not finish. I will leave a link to the Goodreads group in the description box as always, but yeah, books that I didn't finish. I've been talking about this and thinking about this a lot lately. I actually did write up a post about this and posted it on my blog, so I will link that in the description box. And I also talked a little bit about the books that I did not finish in October, and that was included in my October wrap-up, so I will link that as well. So from the list on my blog, on that post, I chose 10 books, and since this is Top 5 Wednesday, I'm choosing five of those books and telling you what they're about and why I did not finish them. I didn't really rank these. I didn't feel it was necessary. I just chose five off of my list and yeah, let's just go ahead and get right into it. So the first book that I'm going to tell you about is The Intimates by Ralph Sasswan. I tried reading this during a readathon last year. It's been more than a year ago that I DNF'd this book and this story is about Maisie and Robbie and they are best friends I think but they have they love each other and they're really close and it deals with their relationship and their first jobs and it's kind of like a coming of age novel it also deals with the complications of their family relationships it deals with illusions of sex and it deals with the wonders and disappointments of becoming an adult so it sounds really interesting, but when I was reading it, it just seemed like a lot of unnecessary sex and I wasn't really getting into it. The writing I didn't really like, so I read about 52 pages and I DNF'd it. The next book that I want to talk to you about is Big Questions by Anders Nielsen. I do believe I've talked about this book on my channel a few times now. Um, I borrowed this from my school library and I tried to read it. It's over 600 pages. It's this huge chunky graphic novel. Um, I was immediately drawn to it because of the thin detailed line work and the minimalistic layout. It has a lot of white space. There's um, panels that aren't panels and a haunting postmodern fairy tale fable. Um, basically what happens is a plane crashes and um, an undetonated bomb, you know, comes out of the plane and the, the birds, the group of birds that this story is told around, think that the plane is this huge bird and that the bomb is this giant egg. So it really centers their story and kind of, you know, figuring out what the plane is, I'm guessing. But it has humor, it has heartbreak, and I was really enjoying it, but I didn't feel like the payoff would have been enough for me to continue on. I don't remember how much I got through it, but I was at least 100 pages into it. But if you're huge into graphic novels and you want to try something a little bit different, I I would recommend it to you. It just wasn't for me. Next book I want to talk to you about is The Principles of Uncertainty by Mira Coleman. And this is a book that I tried to recently read during the Read Your Bookshelf-a-thon and I DNF'd it because it was a mixture of images and text. And while I loved the images, the text I could not get into. It's part narrative, part documentary, part travelogue. It's just it's very interesting how she wove the stories and the images together. I love the whimsical paintings, but like I said, I really couldn't get into the text. I would have liked to keep it on my shelf just for the artwork alone, but I really didn't have space for that big of a book to just be hanging around just for the artwork. If I would have understood or appreciated the text just a little bit, I probably would have kept it, but I went ahead and put this on my paperback swap site and someone snagged it up pretty much immediately. So I hope they're enjoying it more than I did. So I know I've already talked about three books already and I only have two to go since it's top five, but I'm really, my last books are going to be literary fiction. And Literary fiction and I have not found a mutual ground yet. I have tried several works of literary fiction and I haven't been successful yet, so I'm taking a break from it. Um, one I want to talk to you about is How You Love Her by Diaz Junio Han I forget how to say his first name, Diaz. And this story is kind of like about love and heartbreak and losing love and all of that. It was my first attempt at literary fiction. I did borrow it from the library, so 
thank goodness I didn't purchase that when I was able to return it. I know this is a beloved book and literary fiction readers love this book. It just definitely was not for me. I don't know if it was the writing style or just the subject matter, but I didn't get very far into it at all before I DNF'd it. The next two books I will talk about super quickly, and that is The Shore by Sarah Taylor and um, A Girl is a Half-Formed Thing by Emmer McBride. And both of these I DNF'd last month, finally. The Shore, it's kind of like mini stories set in different time periods that all tie into a bigger story. And I did read the first few stories in that book, and I really thought that I was gonna be able to get through it, but I just had so many other books that I was more interested in, and it sat on my nightstand for like a month and a half untouched, so I just decided, you know, I'm never gonna get to this book. Let me get rid of it. So it's sitting in my unhaul pile right now. A Girl is a Half-Formed Thing. I also talked about this one. It's another literary fiction work and I absolutely love the cover so much that I'm still going to keep this book. But as soon as I started it, the narrative was a very, it was, it was that unstandardized narrative. Um, it was very reminiscent of Room by Emma Donahue, the way it was written, and I just, I couldn't get into it. I forced myself through Room because I kept hearing like how great it was and how amazing it was, and I do think the story was good, but I feel like it could have been so much better if maybe a true five-year-old told that book, and in this story, um, it's dealing with a whole new subject matter, um, but yeah, it's another one that I just couldn't get into. So those are my top five books that I DNF'd um, for various reasons, but I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts about books that you have DNF'd and maybe possibly why, but that's all I have for you today. I'll see you again very soon. I have a couple of reviews coming up, so stay tuned for those. I'll see you again soon. Bye!